Hey, greetings YouTube performance reviews where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. And what does that mean? Well, that means I have thoroughly tested this machine, taken it apart, put it back together, and I'm gonna give you my full review. So stick around. I'm gonna give you a lot of good information in this video. I think you will find this very helpful if you are thinking about purchasing any SIBO product or any full-size canister, this machine, there's a lot to, to go over, so I'm gonna go over all that stuff. So first we're gonna go over an overview of the machine. We'll talk about expendables. We'll go in the shop, we'll take it apart. I'll show you what it looks like inside. And then we'll do a pickup test and kind of a practical vacuuming around the house. Let me take you on a tour of the D4. It's kind of a funky machine. SIBO uh, is all about form and function. They're not about looking pretty, paying stay-at-homes for reviews or anything like that. So if you're not familiar with SIBO, they're a German manufacturer. They've been on the U.S. market over 20 years now. Um, they were first founded, I believe, sometime in the 80s uh, in Germany. Anyways, they're very well made. They make just about everything on the machine in Germany. Uh, and they make pretty much all the parts themselves in-house, which is really cool. So this is everything that comes in the box. Your crevice tool, your upholstery tool, your dusting brush. And your dusting brush does articulate, which is really nice if you want to get in somewhere tight uh, or above something. Find that nice in this nice triangle shape. It's really convenient. They do make a larger one. They give you a very, very basic uh, Visselwerk style hard floor tool. They also give you a power brush. But before I get into the power brush, I want to mention when I tested this, I don't particularly like the style floor tool. It's on numerous other vacuums. Um, I went ahead and purchased their premium hard floor tool. And this is just really a hefty, well-made floor tool. It also has a very high airflow, uh, which means it picks up very well, as I'm showing you right here. Um, the rubber wheels are soft, heavy duty. And in this case, I've done a modification where I've removed the front brush strip, which can be done through this orange um, piece right here. And that allows the stuff just to flow in here. So just a little disclaimer, I did buy that separately. Going on to the wand. The wand is a metal plastic hybrid. Um, it's metal over here, plastic over here uh, with a separate area for the electrical. It locks in. It's pretty sturdy. It does have a little bit of wobble um, but again, no, no real complaints about that. Now the nozzle has a bumper on it. It has four carpet height settings and then the on and off to switch it between hard floor and carpet is right here, which is really peculiar. Usually that would be on the handle, um, but SIBO has never done that. Now what is on the handle, um, is you do have your su suction up and down and an on and off. Then you have an on and off switch right here on the canister as well. And then this light ring lets you know that it's plugged in and lets you know the speed of the motor. And that was done in case you're deaf. So nice, again, attention to detail uh, from SIBO. Going on to the nozzle. Um, this is an ET1 nozzle. You can get a slightly wider one as well at your local dealer. It's very heavy duty, very robust. This has proven itself. They've put this nozzle on numerous other canisters and it's available on an upright as well. So it's really a tough, well-proven nozzle. And as you can see, I've used it a lot. Um, when I first got this, you can go check out my video on that, but I actually cleaned everything off. So I really use my vacuums when I do them in for review. Now on this nozzle, you can see without any tools, just by pushing a button, I can now pull the brush roller out and clean it. Um, this is something to note. There are a lot of vacuums that market these tangle-free brush rollers. None of them work. None of them are actually tangle-free. So no matter what brand of vacuum you buy, you at least once a month are going to cut the hair off the brush roller. At least with the SIBO, you don't need any tools. You can just open this right up, cut your hair off, and put it back in. So that makes it really nice and uh, in terms of maintenance. And I think that's why you see so many vacuum shops and so many vacuum repair people choose SIBO and recommend SIBO. Let's reinsert this brush. Right there. And that just, just kind of give it a wiggle. 
and everything just goes right back together. I really like that. There is an orange clean out door. If for some reason you get something jammed in there, you can get to it without taking it apart. Again, SIBO thinks of all these things. Now the wheels have some soft rubber on them, so they're not going to mar it. One negative I found with this is there's no rear squeegee. So hard for floor performance um, was above average, but not perfect. Um, so you would switch to your hard floor tool if you're doing a lot of hard floor. We're gonna talk bags, supplies, filters. And I think the number one thing about the D4 is it's oriented in terms of holding a lot of dust and a lot of dirt. Um, I had a friend of mine who has one of these describe this as a bottomless pit. It is basically a bottomless pit of a bag. Now, usually I go with one, one and a half bags when I do a full month long test of my house. Um, not with this one. I've got about a third left in the bag maybe. Uh, it's, it's large and it doesn't lose suction. You see it doesn't puff dust when you uh, change it. It's, uh, it seals up, it's real easy to change. Um, simple as doing that uh, and there you go. Um, so the bag's really easy to change. Uh, on this and I want to just talk about the bag size because I say it's large, but it is it is like ungodly large uh, Compared to their previous generation of canister. It's about double uh, So if you're coming from one of the K series or the C series canister um, and Compare it to another company's bag again. It's much larger as well And this probably gives you a better idea how much larger it is so I, I cannot imagine going through eight of these bags in a year, uh, but I think you could do it if you had, you know, four or 5,000 square foot house, uh, it's possible. But if you're doing two, 3,000 square feet, it's gonna take you a long time to fill this bag. To give you an idea of the size of my house, it's about 5,000 square feet, though I usually only do the upper two levels when I test them and not uh, my, my base floor, but just to give you an idea of what it's gotten. Uh, and I've sucked up like coffee grounds, dirt. I mean, I really use this thing. Uh, it doesn't really have an odor to it, which is nice. Um, some bags, you know, as they get full and you leave them, no odor. I think one thing that you'd want to know with this machine is how full does the bag go? Because this is how full I had it. Uh, but there's some room in it. And again, it's been described to me as a bottomless pit. Um, so let's see. Let's see how full we can get the animal hair. I've got the unlimited animal hair hack. Uh, so let's see how much hair we can put in the machine. All right. Well, that's maybe half to two thirds of that t-shirt bag full of animal hair. And yeah, it really doesn't lose suction as it gets full. Also maintains pretty clean. So that's as full as one of those will get. Now there is a full bag check indicator. This will also go off if there are blockages. And how you use a full bag check indicator like this is no tools attached. And you can just tell it'll just slide over and turn reddish orange, depending on how full the bag is. Uh, right there, and I've simulated that by covering it with my hand. Now the, that being said, the filter and the gasket, the lid are all one piece. And when you change it, you basically peel it off and then you put a new one on. So it's always renewing the gasket in the lid as well which is kind of a cool design aspect to it. Now, if it does start to smell, they, SIBO does sell these uh, uh, SIBO Fresh um, things that you put in the bag or you put in the machine. Um, I didn't use them, I didn't find them necessary, but I got them to show you on camera. Let's go to the bottom side of this machine because that is very interesting. So one of the things I most liked about it was how easy this was to check and remove. I mean, that 
that is so easy. And then using the rear wheel as a reference point, you know where you're putting it. And when they send them to you, they come flat like this. Again, very eco-friendly packaging. Um, you know, they, nothing special, but this is what they look like when they're dirty. Here's the dirty one that came with the machine when I got it. Give you an idea. Um, and it's just like a little gnome hat. You just fold it down in there. And then this is, like I said, this is the pre-motor filter and top lid gasket. So very cool that they did that in such an easy change package. I really do like this. I think it's a great system. Now this isn't like HEPA 13, HEPA 14, you know, UPA. It's not a nail fisk. But the filtration is more than adequate for allergy and most asthma sufferers. You know, pollen, animal hair and stuff, uh, animal dander. All that's trapped in the bag. Very little of it even makes it to the post motor filter. And then from the post motor filter, it then goes into this pantyhoe like material that's in the air bumper that protects your furniture. Now, this machine, when I've been running it, it's very quiet. You, you may have noticed. That gives you an idea how much air it's really moving versus when the filter's in place, which redistributes the air through all the channels. To give you an idea there. A interesting feature of the machine is the taper in the hose, which means on the machine end, it is much wider than on the intake end, as you can see. And the reason for that is if something gets stuck, this is the most restrictive part of the machine, you can reach in there and hopefully grab whatever you shouldn't have sucked up out of there. This also increases airflow and creates a basically a velocity stack in the hose. Very cool technology. Now the next thing I want to point out is there's a parking position in the back for your hard floor tool. As well, there's a parking position right here in the back so you can put it in the closet. And this makes the machine surprisingly compact when you store it. Now, something I've seen a lot of people ask or discuss is the size of the D4, which is kind of deceiving. It's about the average size of a canister vacuum. Here it is next to its predecessor and some other competitors coming from the Mintelschmann. Even though it's full size, I didn't find that to be any different than any other canister I used. And the weight was about the same as something like the C3 or Henry. Welcome to the In the Shop segment where we actually take the machine apart and talk about what's inside, the mechanisms, the circuitry, all that. One thing that's really unique about this machine, you can see by this C-shaped item to the left, is they use a different type of plastic in there for sound deadening. This is really ingenious, and the shape of this naturally diffuses the air without the need of insulation, which is kind of cool. Now, the circuit board is two-piece, it's very robust, it appears to be made in Germany as well. Uh, everything in here is very well made. The plastic, the casters, all that is excellent. Everything is double insulated and the machine is relatively easy to work on. So I really can't complain about that. The motor is something of wonder. It's very small, very compact, but it produces a large volume of airflow and uh, suction as well. So I thought that was really amazing. I was calling this machine the Kuna Sega Vacuums because it's a full-size machine powered by a compact motor. And if you're not familiar with Kunaseg, they make supercars uh, that use three and four cylinder motors that produce like 600 to 1,000 horsepower from those little tiny motors. This is very much the same thing. The lid is glass reinforced along with a relief valve and what I showed earlier, which was the bag check indicator, all very well made and it's adjustable. So you can actually tune the bag check indicator to altitude. And you can see just how overbuilt this machine is uh, from this footage here. The power nozzle is very much the same way. Everything's easy to get to, straightforward, and it's robust. The ET1 power nozzle has already proven itself uh, for generations before this machine. Now, one of the things that adds to the durability of this machine is the sensor, which saves the belt and the motor and the power head from having anything happen to it. And all you have to do is remove the object, put it in the upright position, and then you're good to go. No harm done.
Unfortunately, I don't have an adapter for my working vacuum gauge, so we're just gonna use a little duct tape, uh, and that's about as accurate as we're gonna get with this. So if the numbers are a little higher published, it's probably why. We're also a mile above sea level. So we're getting about 75, 80. You can hear that blow off valve uh, kicking in. And again, just about 41, 42 inches of working vacuum. We're gonna do a standard pickup test on hard floor. As always, we have the studio mic going, so you'll get to hear the real sound of the machine. First we'll do the power head, and then we'll do the included hard floor tool. And the brush roller will be on the off position and on the lowest setting. That looks pretty good so far. That's absolutely clean. Um, there's no flour, but there is, uh, there was a piece of cat litter and a piece of breakfast cereal that wasn't picked up by the power head. And I think the reason for that is for some reason, SIBO does not have any sort of rear squeegee here to help divert suction. So, if you're doing a lot of hard floor, definitely switch to your hard floor tool. I did just want to mention that their parquet tool is excellent, and you should definitely get one if you are doing a lot of hard floor. Not only does it maneuver better, it maintains contact with the floor a little bit better, and being able to remove that front brush strip really makes all that pet hair just fly in. All right, we're going to do our standard pickup test, which is flour, cat litter, breakfast cereal, and fresh pet hair. Let's see how it does. I have the nozzle set to the number four setting, which is appropriate for my carpet. Let's see how it did. Oh, no pet hair. No cereal. No cat litter. No flour. Well, that did really well, as it should. This machine spans almost the entire distance of my house with a single plug. This 40-foot electrical cord is really one of the longest I've ever tested in any vacuum let alone a vacuum with a cord rewind. I think one of the biggest advantages of the SIBO nozzle is just how low it gets. It really gets really low and under things just fine. Now those of you familiar with Electroluxes and some other vacuums that have L-shaped nozzles, you know the advantage of this is that you can get in little nooks and crannies very easily. Unfortunately this vacuum does suffer from snap oversteer occasionally. This is nothing different than other canister style vacuum cleaners but it's something you have to be aware of. And if this was your first canister vacuum, this might take some getting used to. Anybody who's had a canister vacuum before, this is a no big, big deal. And especially with this nice air bumper, it's not leaving any marks on the walls or baseboards. So I have to give that to them as they did really think that out. And the reason it does do that snap oversteer is it's got four casters. Uh, so it really, 
if you tug it too hard, it does get going and it has no brakes. As far as stair cleaning goes, it's right at home on the stairs. It balances actually both ways on the stairs. Uh, and these are not the widest stairs in the world. The other thing about the machine is it's got a convenient carrying handle and it's not too heavy. Um, it has one of my favorite features, which you can directly connect a power head and clean your stairs with that. Now, those of you may have noticed it's hanging off the edge a little, but that's the edge where the belt is right here. So that's kind of cool is that the belt just covers that part that's hanging off the edge and it really does work well. Now, they also include a upholstery tool right here as well. And this upholstery tool, it's got bristles on it. really made short work of that. These bristles really do provide adequate agitation. They do make an additional turbo tool you can buy, uh, but I would highly recommend you try the included tool before purchasing one. Well, I appreciate you making it all the way through this video and seeing this. My final thoughts on the Cebo D4 is this is the Kunaseg of vacuums. It is a small motor with large performance and built of the finest materials. Uh, at the time of its design. Now this machine did win an award in 2011. Gosh, that was 10 years ago now. Uh, so I wish I could have reviewed it sooner, but it is still an excellent value. And I see the reason why they haven't discontinued it yet, at least not at the time of filming this. Uh, this machine still blows most vacuum cleaners out of the water in terms of performance. So why change something that's not broke? It's very much like the 911 also. Again, if you're a car person, you know, Porsche hasn't changed the outside of that car very much because it just works. It's very much the same thing. It is very much a timeless design. And if you decide to invest in one of these, you will be rewarded with one of the best vacuum cleaners you've ever purchased, if not the best. I think the only thing I, that rivals this are other high-end German and Italian manufacturers uh, and central vacuums. I really think uh, if you don't ha have the ability to have a central vacuum and you have a large house, having one or two of these around would be excellent. The floor tool, throw it away, buy the premium floor tool. I wish they would just include that. Uh, the other accessory that I would buy would probably be a bigger dusting brush. Other than that, it's good to go. It comes with everything you need. Um, the air bumper around here, this what they call the air belt, is a really fantastic feature, and especially if you're new to canisters, that's gonna keep your walls and furniture from getting too banged up. Now, as you can see, I really did use mine uh, after buying it, I really like it, and I, I can't say enough good things about it. If you have any questions about this that were not answered by the video, please leave them in the comments below. If you own one of these, please, I'd love to hear from it from you. How long does a bag take you to, to actually go through in your size house? Uh, it has just a tremendously large bag, as I talked about. Everything about this is overbuilt and made to last. And I think that's where I'll leave it. Thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if it helped you out. Uh, if you want to talk about vacuums more, not specifically the SIBO, I'll put a link to our Discord server, our Backtalk Discord server, uh, below. And thanks for watching.